I am going to take down all the content on my YouTube channel where I've critiqued Origin of Life on one condition. The condition is this. I am going to name 10 key researchers that have published key papers in the area of Origin of Life. And I'm going to give all 10 of you a chance to answer five essential questions that need to be answered for Origin of Life to be solved. What are these five questions? Well, they're the same five questions that I put up on a recent debate that some YouTubers have said have already been solved. Show me the prebiotic chemistry that would do this coupling. This scheme is what James wanted me to write on the board. If their answer is good, take their answer. I'd like to see you, as a researcher in the Origin of Life community, take their answer and present that as a solution. All five have to be answered to have a model for the Origin of Life. You just answer one and I'll take down all my content. Well, the 60-day challenge has expired. I have offered 10 people who work in the area of origin of life to answer five essential questions, five of many questions that have to be answered in order to build a living cell. One of the questions had to do with making polypeptides, another one with making polynucleotides, the RNA, and another one having to make the polysaccharides. I gave them all of the enantiopure small molecules, all the amino acids, all the nucleotides enantiomerically pure, and all of the sugars enantiomerically pure. And I said, all you have to do is polymerize these. None of them could answer those questions. Then I had, what is the origin of information? And finally, I had build a cell. Let's say you had all of the different components, all the polymers, all the small molecules, and all you have to do is construct a cell. None of them could answer those questions. It's not that some people submitted questions to the experts. No, nothing came in. Nothing. Remember I told you that I would take down everything on my YouTube channel. I am going to take down all the content on my YouTube channel where I've critiqued Origin of Life. And I'd never publicly talk about it again. If all they did was answer one of those five questions, I'd take down everything. I'd stop bothering them. They couldn't do it. They couldn't answer it. So I'm not going to take out down anything. And remember what I told you, that if they can't answer any of the five, I will stop saying that we are clueless, but I'll start saying that we are utterly clueless. The entire area of origin of life is an absolute scam. Origin of life research is a scam. Okay, it was tongue in cheek, but yeah, I think, and I meant it yeah. um, as tongue in cheek. Obsession with the identities that we see in biology right now are giving us a false sense of security about what we're looking for. This is a huge field and people just wander through it saying that they're working on the origin of life when actually what they're doing is having fun with something that struck their fancy and perhaps even if all the work goes exactly as planned, everything turns out well. Um, uh, they won't have actually learned anything about the origins of life. The scam is if we just make this RNA or let's make ATP or ADP, we've got that part nailed. Let's now make this other molecule, another molecule. And how many molecules are going to be enough? And even now today, synthetic biologists cannot make a cell from scratch because there's some contingent information embodied outside the genome in the cell. And that is just incredible. Um, so there's lots of layers to the scam. Even in their own laboratories, they can't put these things together. I gave them the five questions, which a YouTuber said have all been answered already in the literature. I've showed you prebiotically plausible routes to all of those molecules and the assembly of a protocell. No, the YouTuber is wrong. This is what I've been telling you. Here are the 10 experts who wrote the papers that the YouTuber cites. They are confessing that their papers don't answer the questions because they didn't have the answers. The only one to respond to me was Lee Cronin, and Lee Cronin kindly said that my questions were not relevant. The questions were not relevant for the origin of life. I'm not sure how that can be, but what he agreed to do is to meet with me. We were invited to the Harvard University Roundtable. He and I are going to be at Harvard on November 28th, and it was very big of him to come to Harvard and have this discussion with me. There'll be about 100 faculty from Harvard and MIT that will be attending, and maybe from a couple other universities. Almost everyone in that room is going to be favoring the side of Lee Cronin, and that's fine. I said, I don't need a panel. I'll just, I'll just talk to them myself. We will go through this together. We will have a discussion, and he's going to tell us how the origin of life came about. All 10 of those people were invited, and Lee was the only one to agree to meet with me. 
that the sequences of the amino acids and the proteins from humans... Now, Steve Benner did write back. He said, if Jim Tour had given me what he gave Dave Farina in that debate, meaning that all the small molecules in 100% enantiopurity, he would not have even needed slides. And in one hour, he would have explained how life could form. So I said, Steve, why don't you come up to Harvard and we'll discuss that? He said he didn't have time. Okay, he didn't have time. I said, how about if I come down to your institute? I will come down to your institute and you explain it to me. It's not easy to get there. You have to fly into Gainesville, Florida, which is a small airport. And then from there, you got to drive almost two hours to get to Steve Benner's institute. And I said, you can have everyone in your institute on your side and just explain it to me. Because you said you could explain it in an hour. I'll sit there for three hours and I'll come down on my own money and explain it to me because you can do this in one hour. You could explain how life would form. You can come back to a sort of an idea of what the essence of life is. And his reply was, well, my health and my time won't permit it. So this is not a serious scientific discussion. I mean, if somebody says that they will appear in your office paying their own way, and all you have to do is explain to them something that you can explain in one hour, and then they, they decline, this is not a real discussion. What I'm going to try and do in the next 15 minutes or so is tell you about an idea of how we're going to make matter come alive. Lee Cronin, I'm excluding him from this conversation because he was big enough to say he will meet with me and we will discuss it. There will be a film of this made. It won't be live streamed, but we'll end up posting that. But as far as these others, nobody came with anything. This is a house of cards. This is what I've been telling you. And remember, these were just five questions. I could have asked them, how about the mass transfer problem? How, how much material would you need to go from, from A all the way to Z, this construction of a cell? How would you do that? How would you do this without any sort of relay synthesis, without keeping a laboratory notebook? We never talked about the Leventhal 1.0 problem, the folding of proteins. We never talked about the Leventhal 2.0 problem, which is the interactomes, the non-covalent interactions that have to take place between protein, 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 DNA, DNA, RNA, all sorts of these interactions that need to take place. We have no idea how all these substructures within a cell would be synthesized. Of the substructures, do you know how many have been synthesized by any of the origin of life chemists? Zero. So we don't know any of this. And these folks keep doubling down and they act as if they know. They'll say that we're right on course for Darwinian evolution to take over now. No, we don't know. We have no idea, and they'll stand by their primordial soup model, and they'll say this thing happened a pond somewhere next to the ocean somewhere, and these molecules came together and it happened. So that's the state of the origin of life field. I haven't made life in my lab yet. I will. There's Not one possibility. Lee Cronin may come on November 28th, and I hope he does, and he explains to us how life could have originated. So we'll give Lee a chance, and I really admire him for stepping up and doing this. C.S. Lewis taught me a great deal. I used to listen to him lecture, but he taught me a great deal through his writings. As some of you know, I posted a talk that John Lennox did at Rice University, and we did several other videos uh, with John Lennox, and I had dinner for him at my home, and both John Lennox and William Lane Craig were there at dinner. A bunch of students around the table were firing questions. We'll get that produced and get that out, and we also had a lunch with John Lennox, so we'll get some of these videos out and get those posted on the channel as well. Thank you, guys. If you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, send me an email and give me a chance to tell you by Zoom why I believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you're enjoying this series, give us a thumbs up and click the subscribe button, and that way you'll hear when we're coming out with new videos. There are no salaried employees in this organization. All the accounting, all the legal work, that's all done by friends of mine. The only thing that I have to pay for is the production work, and if you could help us out with that, I'd appreciate it. There's a link below where you can just click on that and help us in several different ways. Thank you. Thank you.